Hello world, this serves as my toga. I'm actually sick right now and I'm too lazy to get clothes. But, interestingly enough, Aldi's has been recommended by some site. So, I, uh, I've gotten a beer recently called O'Shea's, if this ad will go away. That would be swell. And look at that, Shrubber 85. Greenville, Indiana, USA, on www.beer.com says, Bottle, coffee, chocolate, milk, and hay aroma. Black with a large tan head. Mildly sweet coffee, chocolate, malt, and mildly bitter hay flavor. I'd have to do that. Okay, body. Aldi's US is the place to pick up a palatable discount sixer. Aldi's US. Aldi's US. That's right. Friggin' liking the Aldi's. Ah, uh, so, oh yay. Also, I've been writing about philosophy, sort of. So, I felt this little togeish outfit to be kind of fitting. So, if I can find one of my former notebooks here. Yes, there it is. Back when I was in community college, because I'm classy like that, uh, I took a Philosophy 101 course, and I got a book that I really enjoyed, and it's called, well, it's not called, but in the beginning there was this introduction that said, Ten Commandments of Philosophy. I am laying here. Wait. That's, that's not it. All right. Allow. This is the first one. I'm just going to read them out because they're good, and then I'll talk about them. Number one, allow the spirit of wonder to flourish in your breast. Doubt every claim you encounter until the evidence convinces you of its truth. Love the truth. Divide and conquer, which I put in quotes reductionism. Collect and construct, which is bottom up. Uh, conjecture and refute, revise and rebuild. Seek simplicity, live the truth. And live the good. Okay, so there's a lot of qualitative things in there I'm not sure about. But again, as I said in the article I just wrote, um, contextualization and sketching is more the nature of philosophy. And here we go. Now, uh, allow the spirit of wonder to flourish in your breast. Well, if you're not curious, you're not going to try to find things out. You're going to be like, hey, I know this stuff and I'm busy. And I'm just going to go get some O'Shea's or some uh, Venus Karuna. Um, so every good thing kind of starts with curiosity and thinking, hey, this could be better, this could be wrong. Two, doubt every claim you encounter until the evidence convinces you of its truth. Well, naturally, you don't want to just take things on board without assessing them. But we oftentimes do, just because, especially because of the way that they're presented. Um, the... Uh, Various marketing apparatuses of today have become pretty good at that. And just people in general have always um, taken things on board without enough critical thinking, myself included, because we don't doubt um, every claim. Some claims we hold too sacred and others just seem to uh, make sense and we don't have the time for a deeper analysis. But what we'll find is even the claims that we hold sacred and don't give up if we examine them, we'll come to a deeper appreciation of them. So it's important to doubt every claim, even every cherished claim, not only for the sake of perhaps getting rid of some faulty notions, but because it's going to help you get a deeper appreciation of what's true about what you know. So, love the truth. Well, this is one of those qualitative things which, obviously, you've got to uh, kind of... Kind of like the truth. You gotta, you gotta romance it a little bit. Um, by this I mean, uh, you've gotta hold it, that weird abstract concept of truth, as this eternal X that's always out of your uh, reach. This little sigil here um, is a weird crest. It says "Vero nihil varius," which means nothing truer than the truth. And that's kind of like, okay, what, what the hell does that mean? It's very uh, mystical and zen and all that jazz. But I do believe, I do, 
that uh, if you think about it that way, that there is nothing truer than the truth and that uh, you can't ever just grip the truth. You kind of have to flow with it. I think it, uh, it makes sense. And of course, that all requires, number three, loving the truth. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, number four, divide and conquer. Very British. <laughs> so basically, this is what I call reductionism or splitting things into their parts, which is kind of what I was talking about in my thing I just wrote. Um, it's uh, generalities and specifics. So you split things up into categories, um, and then you split those categories into parts, and then you go to number five, which is collect and construct. Because once you've broken things down, you have to rebuild them. Um, number six, conjecture and refute. After you've built this theoretical framework, you have to take guesses of its implications and then perhaps uh, find possible refutations of your position. Again, going back to the second one, doubt every claim you encounter until the evidence convinces you of its truth. Um, number seven is revise and rebuild. You're going to have to do that. You can't maintain structural integrity as you take on new information and new insights without revising and rebuilding your models. It's incredibly important. Like, I was just listening to a Joe Rogan podcast where he had that fellow, Dunkle Tr uh, there, there, whatever you say his name, Dunkle Trussell, uh, he said the, something about the snake that doesn't shed its skin dies, and people also need to shed their conceptions and things every once in a while in order to continue living a full life. Right. Um, number eight, seek simplicity. Again, that's kind of Occam's razor. You don't want to add too many layers of complexity to something that obfuscates what you're talking about because the more kind of variables that you're working with, the more prone to error you will become because you have to keep all those things in your head. And even a computer dealing with a bunch of variables is going to um, make mistakes, especially a computer probably because it does serial processing. And we can get into the parallel distributed networks that are being developed, but I'm, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Number nine is live the truth. Well, obviously, once you ascertain some certain base truths, you're going to want to try to live them out to the best of your ability because there's a lot to be said for um, experience, for um, physicality, for actually letting things permeate you because we're a body as well as a mind. And in fact, that's per Antonio Damasio, who is a neuroscientist that wrote popular books like Descartes' Air and Emotion Feeling in the Human Brain and Looking for Spinoza, um, points out emotion... Uh, the body, or the somatic modern hypothesis, which is kind of like the pinnacle crown of what he did there to uh, explain cognition uh, and various processes of it, is uh, is entirely dependent on this kind of integrated system. So yeah, mm. right. Number nine, or I just did that, number 10, live the good. And then once you kind of find the truth, you can probably, and this is more of an ethics thing, uh, going from philosophy to ethics, which ethics is a branch of philosophy, but I often separate them just because it's my own uh, thing. You, living the good. You have to live the good. You feel an impulse to uh, whatever it is that you feel is good to live that out. I would think most people would, unless they're being contrarian and want to practice being sociopaths. But um, living the good is trying to... is Once you have certain base axioms assembled and you're living the truth, it's going to follow naturally that you want to make things as coherent and as functional as possible, which I would uh, define as good, but a lot of people might disagree. This is kind of a difficult one to pin down. It's qualitative. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this brief 10-minute video. I am going to go get my O'Shea's and chillax because this sinusitis is terrible. I worked for like... Uh, well, I don't work long. I work like four hours, but it's nonstop motion and it's very physical and it's at four in the morning or three in the morning, depending on the day. Uh, so I'm quite uh, pushed here. And if you're like grossed out by my toga and the fact that you can see my shoulder, you're weird. Get used to it. It's the human body. I, I'm just, uh, in the United States, there's kind of an odd puritanical thing where for some reason I feel a little bit weird about doing this. And that's why I wanted to do it again metaphysical backbone like I talked about with my uh, German jacket in there. It's like you have to get comfortable with just uh, being you. I sound like I'm naked. I'm wearing this. I've got my gym shorts on. In fact, I have shoes on. <laughs> and 
it's uh it is what it is like going out on the street around here with no shirt on can be a bit of a chore because you receive judgment from some people and it's like okay well i'm male and in this society that is acceptable and get bent <laughs> i mean there's you need vitamin d that's the other thing that i wanted to point out like I'm sick, so obviously I went out and I'm like, I gotta get some sunshine, get some vitamin D going. I live in a kind of a southern area, so it's possible for me to do. And yeah, you're not gonna do that very effectively wearing a shirt. So, all that gratuitous explanation being done. Have a great time wherever time finds you. Thanks for stopping by and subscribe to mellowmission.com. Visit www.fragmentaljournal.com for webcomics, stories, essays, and more. Cheers.